make me wanna eat you Every time I see you, it's like the first time I meet you Fragrance like a flower, subtle and sweet too Seductive and whatever, it might as well be see-through Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a great day so far. Today's video, I wanna show you guys some of my recent winter hiccups. I have 20 new pickups to show you guys and I am just beyond excited because honestly these are some of my favorite pickups that I've grabbed like this entire year. I feel like since Japan I've been going through like a tiny bit of a style evolution style journey which is why I wanted to like clear out a bunch of my wardrobe and that's sort of like breathe new life into my appreciation for style and for fashion. Yeah, I'm just really excited to show you guys some of these new pickups. I think a majority of these pickups you guys have never ever seen before, which I am stoked about. So yeah, let's get right into the video. Also, if you guys could, it'd mean a lot to me if you could drop a like down below, write a little comment. Um, feel free to ask questions, be happy to answer any. And there is a Somar drop sprinkled into this video, which I am like so excited about. I can't wait to show you guys. I'll give all the info and details as it comes up in the video. So yeah, let's get into the first pickup. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this first pickup already. This is a nice little vintage jacket that I grabbed a couple months ago. This is a vintage Eddie Bauer goose down bomber jacket. This beautiful sun fade on it. This is a cotton outer, but it's been like washed or worn so much that it's actually become like basically moleskin now. It's like, it's extremely soft. I love this sun fade. It's sort of like faded to sort of like a purplish gray on the shoulders and on the back. But the base color is sort of like a slate bluish gray. Stunning color. Um, it's a goose down jacket, so it's kind of like puffy. It's got like a little bit of fill to it. Um, it's like a bomber jacket silhouette. Beautiful raglan sleeve cut, which I feel like you don't see too often on bomber jackets. So it looks stunning. It has a really nice knit collar knit hem ribbing and then knit sleeve cuffs so it has like a nice tight grip. Two hidden pockets up front which is very big. I believe this jacket's from the 80s or the 90s so it's a little bit on the older end. Even though it does have these two front pockets on it, I felt like the body was a little bit empty. Like it's maybe missing one detail. I'm not sure if anybody else thinks the same but I added this tassel onto the front zipper so then it has like a little bit of extra something going on. And the tassel also makes it really easy to glide the zipper up and down for ease of access. And it also just adds like a nice little personal flair, like a personal touch to the jacket, which I really appreciate and sort of makes the jacket a little bit more mine. If you're ever on the hunt for vintage outerwear, highly recommend checking out Eddie Bauer. I've owned so many Eddie Bauer pieces over the years. It's such an affordable vintage brand too. I think this jacket was in like the 50 to $60 range. So can definitely find some insane steals too. This next jacket I also showed off on my Instagram and people are going crazy for it. It's such a nice jacket. And I've been going through like a recent Tom Ford era Gucci kick. I've had a lot of like recent appreciation for those collections. It's slowly trickling in a few pieces. I have two in this video to show you guys. This first one is a Gucci canvas deck jacket with this also, incredible sun fade, back to back incredible sun fades. Um, I got this for an insane deal. I can't remember if I got it off eBay or if I got it off Braille. One of those, and I got it for such a steal. Super slept on jacket. This is a military style jacket based off the N1 deck jacket, which I actually used to have a like 40s navy deck jacket that had a beaver collar on it, so it sort of had like a fuzzy collar. Incredible jacket, really expensive, but this one's actually cheaper than the vintage one. It's also nicer quality, to be honest. The base material is this beautiful duck canvas that's just been washed and worn so much. Extremely soft. This color is sort of like a really dusty, dark brown. It's extremely muted, but it has hits of like a lighter brown tone because of the sun fading. This particular one has epaulets, which I actually used to really not like epaulets on pieces, but I had a recent appreciation for them. I think they look really cool. I love how it sort of like bulks up the shoulder a little bit. I love this collar shape. It's typically found on deck jackets. And I think it looks really nice, especially rolled up too. You get like a really cool shape going on. 
and it's just something a little bit different. It's not like a standard pointed collar shape, which I really appreciate. It has a dual front zip closure, so you can unzip it from the top or the bottom. From looking at jackets, I always think that's just like an added plus. I think all jackets should have that. It adds like more wearability and more style opportunity. The sleeve fit is incredible too. If you have it unbuttoned like this, it sort of like bellows out a little bit, and then you can show off a little cuff, uh, depending on what your underneath layer is. I got a size 50 in this jacket, which is a tiny bit roomy on me, but I actually like that because I'm able to layer something underneath it, like a hoodie or like sort of like a mid-layer shirt, which is really nice. Um, it does have two adjustable buckles on each side, and I've kind of like tightened them up a little bit to cinch in the body a tiny bit. And then it also does have zipper pockets up front, which is extremely nice. I forgot to mention, but these zippers are Gucci branded Lampo zippers. Uh, kind of nuts, and I think this is actually my first Gucci piece ever. So yeah, stunning jacket. Before I get into the next piece, I want to give a quick story time. I saw this photo, I forget where, probably Instagram, and I loved his button-up shirt, and I wanted to find something very similar. I was looking for weeks and weeks, trying to hunt down this like tonal pinstripe button-up shirt. It had like brown and purple hits, really muted tones, but you can still see the pinstripe uh, pattern. And after weeks, I finally found it, and it actually happens to be Gucci Tom Ford, or at least the one that I found is. Incredible little button-up shirt that I've been getting so much wear out of. I wear this thing probably three or four days out of the week now. The camera's able to pick up some of that pinstripe detail. It's extremely subtle, which I actually really appreciate. And I love the collar shape too, how it's not like a straight collar. It sort of comes out in like a curved point, which is really nice. You just get so much wear. It pairs up great with those last two jackets I just showed you. I think I got this off Grail for like 40 or $50. Shipped all the way from Europe too. So I got it for such a good deal. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that real quick. Switching over to a pair of shoes. This is a pair of shoes that I have been wearing almost nonstop. My shoe rotation has changed so much. These are a pair of Puma Black Label Runners. I don't know the exact model name. I feel like there's very little info on this sort of collection that they did. The label sort of like their luxury label. They produced some really intricately designed sneakers. This particular one is extremely narrow and pointed. You can see like how much of a point the shoe comes to. It's black leather, but it does have hits of brown. So all around the shoe, you get to see a little bit of brown peeking out, which is really cool. And I loved the stitched Puma logo on the sides of the shoe. It has like sort of a cross stitch going around it. And then it has the same sort of toe cap that you'll find on like a Samba or a Gazelle or a Gat. It's a really classic looking silhouette. It's sort of like a dress sneaker. I'm not sure if that was sort of like the intention with the black label line. I do have a couple of the shoes from this collection that I'll show in some future videos. But for now, I just want to show you guys this one. It does have a subtle little Puma logo hit on the front of the toe, which is really cool. You get to see some of the brown hits poking out. It reminds me a lot of, one second, let me grab them. It reminds me a lot of these shoes right here, which are the Caro Cushion Pole Tornado Zip Boots from, forget entirely what year, but has the same sort of coloring going on where it has black with hits of brown, pretty much in the same areas too. So a little bit of coordination going on between these two guys. I got these resold as well because the sole is falling apart entirely. Um, so now they're all fresh, super slept on. Um, I've been having a big, big Puma kick lately. Such a well-designed shoe that I've never seen anybody talk about before. So there you go. These are the Puma Black Label dress sneakers. Okay, next up, I wanna show you guys a band tee that I've just been so excited about. This is a vintage Portis Head tee from their, not their debut album, but their second album titled Portis Head. In this beautiful, like purplish blue color, incredible distressing going on. Um, I love the level of fade on the graphic and how just the T is faded over time. Single stitch on an Anvil XL. And I actually got this from somebody whose last name is Hyatt. And we were trying to figure out if we were related because the geographic zones kind of matched up a little bit, but we're like pretty sure we're not related. But yeah, it was a funny pickup, funny story. So many reprints out there. So it was really awesome to find like an original one from the original owner too. 
So I am the official like second owner of this tee, keeping it with the Hyatts. Tons of distressing going around it. Such an insane tee, fits me perfect too. If you guys haven't listened to Portishead before or the trip hop genre in general, highly recommend giving them a listen. Okay, so the next two items, I am so incredibly excited to show you guys. It literally pains me to not wear them right now because I would be wearing them, but I want to show you guys on camera and be able to show all the details and stuff. So let me grab them. So these are the Somar Ahab denim in both colorways. I've shown off one of these before, I believe, in a previous video, but now we have the two final versions. I'll run over the details of the release at the end, but let me walk you guys through some of the details of the jeans themselves. So these are my two personal pairs. I'll talk about the raw pair first. So this is my personal pair of the raw denim version, which they're both salvage. This raw pair is done in a 14 ounce denim, and then the wash pair is in a 13.5 ounce denim that's then washed. And they both feature a calf leather waistband and calf leather back pockets. Extremely buttery soft. It's incredible how soft these are. And then we have our own custom hardware and everything. So we have our own custom Somar button fly, matte black buttons. And then it might be kind of hard to see on camera. Hopefully it picks it up. We have our own Somar rivets as well, matte black rivets. And then through the sample process, originally the jeans did have the badge on the back right pocket, um, but it just wasn't super comfortable and I wanted to find a better place for it to live. And I eventually ended up on putting it right there, so it actually acts as a rivet. The matte black Somar badge, it sits right above the pocket. Sits so nicely, I love that placement. The actual fit is sort of like a wide leg fit with a subtle flared opening. I have yet to find a pair of shoes that do not look good with these pants, and I'm not trying to gas up the brand or anything, I'm just in love with these jeans. My sample pairs are beat into the ground, so I have to break in these guys again. One of my favorite details are the quick draw pockets. You guys can see the new pocket shape that we have going on. Super easy to get your hand into. It's like, I don't know why all pockets don't have that shape. I think it's so nice. And I love how at certain angles, you get to see the pocket flap jet out a little bit. It looks so clean. I love it with the metal badge on there as well. Obviously the raw denim is a lot stiffer. It's got a lot more structure to it. Um, it'll drape a little bit differently because it's unwashed and just a tiny bit heavier than the wash pair, which I'll talk about. So the wash pair, like I mentioned, is 13.5 ounce salvage denim. It's some of the softest denim you'll ever touch. It's so nice. Has all the same details, so it does have the quick draw pockets, matte black hardware, calf leather, belt line, back pockets. And because this one is slightly lighter in fabric, it'll drape a little bit differently. So if you like more structure, then I'd say the raw pair is your go-to, and then wash pair has a little bit more flow, a little bit more drape. Depends on what you're feeling. I go between both. I wore my sample pair for like two months straight, and then the raw pair I've now started to break in because I have to do that all over again. And yeah, it's such an incredible pair of jeans. I'm so happy with them. Uh, it took a long, long time. There's the up close right there. That is the back side. I'm super happy with the leather too. Couldn't be happier with these jeans. I also want to show, let's see. If we, oh yeah, we got a little bit of heel bite going on. Let me back the raw pair. These have been the pair that I've been trying to like re-break in because now that I have the final production pair, I want to start wearing those. But yeah, both these jeans will be releasing on December 23rd, which is a Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll show all the time conversions. Follow the Somar page. You guys know the rollout's about to be crazy. Both these jeans will retail for $249, which if you know the pricing of salvage denim and leather and all that, custom hardware, it's sort of a crazy deal, but I wanted to make these jeans really affordable and super accessible to whoever would want them. And yeah. Really, really happy with these. Super happy with these. I hope you guys appreciate them too. These have easily been my most worn pair of jeans this year uh, across like all of the sample variations I've had. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to finally be able to put these out in the world and see you guys wear them. And I hope you guys like them as much as I do. Yeah, let's move on to the next item. All right, let's do another t-shirt first. You guys know I love my gaming tees. 
I will eventually make a whole gaming merch collection video because it's probably pushing like 20 pieces now, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys in one video. So that video will eventually come soon. While that video awaits, I want to show you guys probably my favorite one so far. It is a Resident Evil 5 bootleg t-shirt. I have never seen this thing before. This thing is crazy. It's on an M&O Knits tee, which is one of the best like vintage blank tees you can get from like that early 2000s era. Resident Evil being one of my favorite franchises of all time. So many core memories playing this game. It's, yeah, it, it's such a good game. If you haven't played it before, you gotta. The only reason why I can guess is a bootleg is because of the graphic. A lot of research to see like if there are any of these existing out there with like just the black and white print, no dice. They all have like the standard Resident Evil 5 logo or some sort of like character graphic on it and I've never seen just the black and white hit with the outline 5. It goes crazy. Other than that though, really standard basic t-shirt. Something that only I could get excited about I guess. So yeah, just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Easily one of my most worn t-shirts as of the past couple months. All right, moving right along, I have a couple of like really big coats I wanna show you guys. First one I'll show you guys was sent over from the boy, Mr. Oscar, Mr. O-Files. Oscar's absolutely killing it. I have another pickup I'll show you guys from his brand, but this is his newest release. This is his trench coat with this beautiful like wool flannel lining on the inside. Insane piece, the construction is crazy. There's so much going on. I love all the straps and I love how oversized it is. It does have epaulets on the shoulder, which like I mentioned, I really appreciate. It's incredible, I think this is a size small or medium. I got a size medium in this jacket. It's extremely heavy, it's perfect for the winter time. Like, it's actually an insanely warm jacket. And I brought this back home with me for Thanksgiving in Boston, which I was very clutch for that. Oscar, you absolutely snapped on this jacket. This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen, like one of the homies produce. So, congrats to you, it's incredible. This next coat is something that I've been on the hunt for for a minute. Um, trying to track down like the perfect silhouette that like fits me, I guess. And I can like seamlessly be incorporated into the wardrobe. And it is this vintage, wool cashmere blend overcoat insane beautiful piece this is from chaps and it has this beautiful like washed blue silk poly lining on the inside insane texture it's sort of like a camelish texture but it's a wool and cashmere blend feels incredible and i love how like structured it is on my shoulders you guys will see on the on body um, yeah stunning piece so much like versatility when it comes to styling too and it's just something that i've never owned before but it, I feel like it just perfectly fits into my wardrobe. This is a size 46R. Um, sizing can be kind of weird on these, especially if you go the vintage route, so you just gotta make sure you get measurements. Um, that's what I did. I actually ended up getting two like similarly shaped jackets and ended up selling one and then I kept this one. So yeah, stunning coat. I think I got this for like 100 bucks off eBay. Crazy deal, especially considering how it's a wool cashmere blend. These can fetch like anywhere from like 60 to sometimes like $500 vintage, depending on the brand. All right, the next pair of shoes I wanna show you guys actually have to take off because I'm wearing them right now. So these are a little bit of a curveball pickup that I guess most people would not expect to see on like a fashion channel or especially coming from my channel. These are some woven leather sandals. These are called Huaraches. For a little bit of a story time on how I discovered these shoes, I walk my dog in my neighborhood multiple times a day and I always talk to the same people sitting out on their porch, smoking cigarettes, whatever they do. I saw one of the guys wearing a brown version of these sandals and gassing them up. He loved how I was into them. He sent me the link on where to grab a pair. And yeah, they're so sick. They're definitely not for everybody. Um, and they're also for sure not a winter pickup, but because it's like always warm in California for the most part, these fit into the wardrobe perfectly. I've been wearing them maybe like at least three days of the week. They've got a really nice tread on the bottom as well. And they've held up great. I've probably clocked like 50 miles in these because I walk my dog in them too. They're like 20 bucks. I've seen a lot of brands kind of like do their own version of a woven sandal, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just go with like the more affordable route. These are way cooler. For another button up, this is another addition to the collection of RAF short sleeve button up shirts. I don't know how many I have at this point. Probably like seven or eight, I'd say. And this is my first pickup from this collection, which is spring, summer 2002. I believe it's called Woe Unto Those 
X, Y, and Z. It's a really long collection name. I grabbed this off Baiyi actually. Got a sweet little deal with the coupons that I had. So this thing was like really, really cheap compared to what it normally was on the site. I've never seen this piece go for sale before. It's pretty regular degular, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously the main detail are the military style ribbons pinned onto the wearer's left side of the shirt. It's such an interesting piece. It's the same like standard fit that Raph has been using for most of his button up shirts. It's a size 48, fits very slim. Um, I'd say more like a true 46. If I could get it another size, I probably would it probably go up one size. The material is fantastic as well, and you know it's from one of Raph's like most iconic collections too. So I'll probably be hanging on to this for a minute. The pins are hilarious. I think they're so cool actually. I've never seen an idea like this executed on a button up. Okay, moving on to another band tee. This is probably one of the most valuable things I have in my wardrobe. A lot of you guys know that I'm a big Sade tee collector. I still have quite a few, but I ended up having to trade two of them to get this one. So shout out to my Sade tee plug for hooking it up. This is a Sade Love Deluxe 1993 t-shirt. Insane piece. Like I have never seen this graphic before. All of my friends who are also into Sade tees we're going crazy over this. I've also never seen it before. It's got her face printed up front with this beautiful, like, distressed cracking going on. The wear on it is insane. Big Sade script up front. Love Deluxe 93 underneath that. And then on the back, it's a double face hit, which is crazy. Sade Tour 93. Fits me incredible. I love the color on this too. It's sort of like a faded black. Yeah, it's just like one of the most insane t-shirts I've I've ever owned and one of the most valuable things I've ever owned too. Insane. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. If you know about Shadi Tees, you know how crazy that is. Alright, so moving along, I'll show you guys another band tee. This is another crazy pickup, something I've been on the hunt for for a minute. Um, because I love this graphic, I love this band. I just haven't found the right one yet. I have owned a couple, but they've either like fit me not right, or um, maybe like the material wasn't good, or it was like a bad reprint, because um, most of these tees are reprints. I'm pretty sure this one is a bootleg, but it's a vintage bootleg um, from the late 90s. This is a vintage black flag, everything went black tee which is a compilation album, has one of the most insane graphics I've ever seen. This is probably my favorite graphic print ever on a band tee across everything that I've ever owned. I think this is probably one of my favorites and it's been one of my favorites. I love how this tee has faded to like a deep purple and the level of distressing is stunning. It has tons of like little micro rips and tears going on. The actual shirt is like semi sheer and because of how it's faded, the graphic is sort of faded to like a pinkish hue, which looks stunning. Because it's a little bit on the longer side and I didn't want to crop it just yet, I've just been wearing it tucked in and it looks fantastic. Easily one of the most worn t-shirts I have right now and I'm so stoked to finally have like the perfect one in my collection. Moving right along, I want to show you guys a quick little accessory pickup. This is the Kiko Kostadnov A6 Novelist hat that released in their most recent collection, I believe. They dropped a couple pairs of shoes and like a whole clothing line and I just fell in love with this hat. It has a ton of different paneling going on between like the mesh and the nylon sort of like top of the hat. It says Asics Novelist on the front, on the back, and then obviously the main detail, something that I absolutely love about this hat is the fact that the back is a tied knot made of the same mesh that goes around the side of the hat. So you just put it on, you just tie in a quick knot and you have like the beautiful like mesh draping down below. It looks really sick. The actual construction of the hat is insane too. I love how this front center panel actually goes like over the top of the head but it still has separate panels on the side. Um, and then the piping is just so beautiful. It's a great hat, it's a really great hat. Um, I actually got this off of Bai because it sold out instantly online and the grail listings were going for like 250, 300, but I got this for under retail off Bai. So got a crazy deal. Actually, well, I got it under retail because of the coupons. I want to show you guys that little guy real quick. So this next pickup is another, like really not, fall wintery pickup but because I'm in LA it's warm most days like I think it's like 70 degrees today this is a pair of shorts I've just been wearing so much sorry for the lighting by the way these are a pair of vintage 
Old Navy cargo shorts. They're almost like capris. They're sort of like really long shorts. They're kind of oversized. This is part of the Old Navy surplus line, uh, which is kind of interesting. And I also released the bottom seam, so that has a little bit of extra length. But yeah, other than that, there's just some cargo shorts that have a like really great fit on them. Incredible sun fade. I love the cargo pockets and then also the welt pockets on the back. They've gotten so much wear recently. And they look great with a lot of shoes, especially with like the sandals, the Pumas I showed earlier, and even like boots. I think boot short combinations are like sometimes tough to pair up. Um, these are definitely the right shorts for the job. The sun fade is incredible too, how it sort of like gets lighter as it gets lower. I think these are like $20 off of eBay, so insane steal. So next up is a new silhouette that I've never had in my wardrobe before, and it's a like quarter zip crew neck polo-y shirt. This is also from Bayi, but the brand is J. Crew. Super random, but I love the cut on this, and I love like the pocket detailing. So it's sort of like a quarter zip, like this guy right here, which is really cool, and I love the color. It's sort of like a slate blue, really faded, almost a gray. Has two front pockets up there, little button front pockets. It fits incredible. It's a tiny, tiny bit long. I might bring it to my tailor and take off like an inch or like an inch and a half. But other than that, it's so stunning. It's so comfortable. Size medium. Um, not too much going on. Just like a really great like layering piece too. It looks nice with like a button up shirt underneath it and a little collar poking out. I think this is like 35-ish dollars off of Bayi. But honestly, J. Crew has some really nice stuff. If you look at the vintage selection online, you can find some really cool vintage J. Crew stuff if you want like a slightly smarter, like business casual sort of look. It's a double layered sweatshirt, like jersey material. So it's like two layers sewn together inside out. Um, so it kind of like matches up perfectly. It has like a nice thickness, a nice weight to it. So yeah, that's the little J. Crew quarters it. Down to the last three pickups. I'm trying to run through this stuff as quickly as possible, not talk too much. These were also sent over to me by Mr. Oscar, Mr. O'Files. And these are another recent release. These are the open seam trousers. Beautiful, beautiful pair of pants. It's in a really nice, like lightweight, trousery material, but it has the raw seams on the side. So you get a little bit of fraying, a little bit of like loose threads hanging out, which looks really cool. Um, super wide leg, very, very baggy fit. Um, it's got double pleats on each side. And then I really love this pocket detail. It has welt pockets on the side seam. Super clean backside as well. Both pockets have a little flap going on. Back left side has the O-Files embroidery. I have a couple photos in these pants already and they just, they look great. I have yet to find a, a pair of shoes that these don't look good with. Shout out to Oscar for sending these over. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna save the next pair of shoes for last. This next pickup I grabbed from one of my friend's vintage stores over in London. Shout out to Luke from Ev Eternity. Grabbed this piece because he had a really nice drop lined up. Uh, this is a vintage 1990s Japanese overshirt. Super beautiful piece. This is actually something I wasn't expecting to like as much as I do. I've been wearing it so much, like almost every single day. It's like the perfect like middle layer. It's not quite as warm as like a sweatshirt but it's a little bit heavier than a flannel. It has a really nice like oversized fit. I love having the collar popped on it. I think the actual collar shape looks so nice when it's popped like that. It has a nice big pocket on the front. A lot of you guys might know that I love going to the movies. And this shirt has some sneaky pockets on it. On the inside, it has these two massive, I'm talking massive pockets on the inside. On either side right there, there's the other one. And I damn near fit like six different snacks. It's so easy to just fill those pockets with snacks and just walk into the movie theater. It doesn't look like you have anything on you. No bag, no nothing. And yeah, really great piece. Um, I love how it fits on me. You guys will see me on body. Um, but yeah, just been getting so much wear. So yeah. So last but certainly not least, let me show you guys another crazy pair of shoes. These are the Puma in collaboration with Alexander McQueen Sprint Lumber Sneakers. This is a sample pair. Um, I believe it's from either 2005 or 2006. So it's incredibly old from one of their first ever collaborations. And yeah, the details on this shoe, I feel like just never end. It's such an interesting shape as well. But to run over some of the details, it has a suede, like I guess you could call it like the Puma check. And then one of my favorite details is like the hand carved tribal inspired pattern 
all around the shoe, going onto both sides, going onto the back, going onto the toe. Insane, I love that pattern. It has a cross-stitched toe box, which is really interesting. Never seen that on a pair of Pumas before. It has this Alexander and Puma ring sort of situation going on in the back that you can flip up. It has a corked sole that sort of is in the shape of a hoof. It's sort of like missing that back piece out of the bottom of the heel, which looks really cool. Yeah, it's just an incredible pair of shoes. The craftsmanship is next level. It's a sample pair, like I mentioned before, but I do know they have produced these in a couple colorways. I just don't know what's changed since the sample pair. I got them in size 42, such a good deal. They fit me perfect. I wore this in like the birthday post that I put up on Instagram. A lot of people were asking what these shoes were, so yeah. Puma Alexander McQueen Sprint Lumber Sneakers. I told you guys I've been on a big Puma kick lately. I have a couple of other pairs to show you guys in some future content. That is gonna conclude it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for Again, if you are interested in the Somar Ahab denim, they will be dropping December 23rd at 10 a.m. PST for $249. They're easily my favorite pair of jeans, and I'm really excited to hear you guys' thoughts on them. I'm really, really happy with them. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.